Good afternoon, it's the 11th of February. I'm looking over farmland and I'm on the very busy Ballygan Road, uh, about three or four miles outside Belfast City Centre. And this is the main operating cemetery for Belfast. This is Roselawn Cemetery and Crematorium. It's the only crematorium in the whole of Northern Ireland. There, there are moves to get another uh, crematorium going because of the volume of people who want cremations. Now, this has been a big, big change in, in uh, burial practice, but that's what people want and that's what people will get. Uh, I have videoed all the cemeteries in Belfast, uh, or most of them, but I've never visited or uh, uh, videoed Roselawn Cemetery and Crematorium, and uh, it's, only, it's only about two miles up the road from me. It's all about the opening hours and all the rest of it. And it's a, it's a, you know, I, I know it's a cemetery, but it's a beautiful cemetery. It is extremely well land, landscaped. It's uh, so many flowers displays. It's called Roselawn because it was, it's, it's a lawn cemetery. Uh, a lot of people are remembered by trees and, and there's lawns and whatnot. Uh, still people want to be buried, of course. Uh, and it's also known as Rose Lawn simply because there's an awful lot of uh, rose planted, roses planted along the, the, um, the, the, the driveways. And, you know, in daffodil flowering time, look, look at the display over here. You know, that'll, you know, there's banks and banks and banks. It is a wildlife haven, uh, Rose Lawn. It's absolutely amazing. But let's look at the notice board, which is just behind me, or one of the notice boards. And that's talking about the crematorium. Hi. And here, this is a kind lady coming to, to give me a map. I was going to come in and annoy you. So I'm st standing at the uh, entrance roundabout here, just off the main road. And you can see how well kept this place is. Um, the cemetery was opened in 1954. And... It's the only cemetery in Belfast where there are plots available for purchase now. Um, it's laid out as a lawn cemetery, so they try to keep, um, you know, the the uh, the grave. Uh, architecture or whatever, you know, the, uh, to a minimum so that they, the lawnmowers can run up in between them and, and whatnot. But that's the way cemeteries are today, you know. Um, it's 300 acres and there, you know, there's quite a bit that are still unused. And as I say, there's a ring fort, or ancient uh, rath up the back end of the graveyard. So it's on the way to Cross Creevy, it's the Ballygown Road out of Belfast and uh, there's some, there's about, I think there's about 15,000 uh, tree memorials. So people have opted to uh, have a cremation and then uh, they're remembered by planting a tree and there's something like 50,000 uh, graves in here. So I've just moved up 
and this is the crematorium and this is the Garden of Remembrance. I'm not going anywhere or close to the crematorium because there's a funeral on at the minute. I can hear a missile thrush in the background there. A lot of people have dedicated seats to uh, relatives who have died. Yeah, there's a missile thrush up there. There he goes. There's a wee re remembrance wall here. And a wee place to, to sit here and, and uh, contemplate. Another remembrance wall. Well, this is probably uh, the saddest part of the cemetery. It's the baby garden of remembrance. I just can't imagine anything worse. Than the loss of a child or grandchild. And the snowdrops are out. Right. And I've just come off one of the avenues and I've found the mound. I uh, don't know why this structure is here. Uh, I'm going to attempt to get to the top of it to give you a, an idea. It's very, very wet. <coughs> Slippery. It's this a mound as in, you know, the mound, historical mounds that I have videoed before, possibly, but I've climbed up here to give you a better view of the vastness, or better understanding of the vastness of this cemetery, and I'm, I'm going to stop up here and you know read you a list. This is only one small section. I'll read you a list of the people who are here. So we've got Dr. John Bell who was into quantum physics. We've got Helen Lewis who survived Auschwitz. One of her family were all wiped out. We've got uh, Selina Blanchflower, who uh, was the mother of Danny Blanchflower and his brother, uh, oh, I can't remember the name. Uh, we've got BJ Hogg, who uh, was cremated here. We've got David Irvine, has a memorial tree somewhere down there. 
we have got uh, John Keenan, the father of Brian Keenan. We've got Isaac Agnew with the uh, Belfast car sales. We've got uh, we've got Artie Bell, the motorcyclist, well-known guy. We've got Joe Bambrick, the footballer. We've got George Best, the footballer. We've got uh, Roy McGee, who, who uh, negotiated the Good Friday Agreement. We've got Dr. Ian Adamson. So quite a few, and there's an awful lot more, quite a few uh, notable people uh, are uh, buried in here. And I hope to, in, uh, in uh, the next few days, to come up and video their headstones or their memorial trees for you. And I have to say this, but every time I come here, you know, the temperature seems to drop. It's, it's one of the coldest places it could be in Belfast. Maybe it's because it's quite high up. It is Baltic today. So I'll put the camera away and try and get down this mound. Just come on round a wee bit on one of the drives and I've spotted the Rath Ring Fort and they're right in the middle of uh, farmland here and residential and look at this not good this is in the middle of the cemetery That's great to see. Not too sure what those ducks are. That's a place of beauty and a place of reflection. And I'm going to have to get out of here. I've got about eight minutes before the gates are locked. So I've got to respect that. But boy, it's one cold place. On a section Y, and this is all cemetery ground up here. And I've come around in a big circle. And my mother and father-in-law were buried up in here. Died over a year ago. Sad times. A place of sadness. And everybody who died in here was some mother's son. There's police, there's military, there's paramilitaries, there's accident victims, there's bomb victims. And each and every one, whether they died by natural causes or some other means, everyone was loved. And everyone was some mother's son. And it's good to remember them. And people here do remember. There are people who come here every day. And one of the most annoying things for me over this last two years was even our cemeteries were locked to grieving relatives.
because of this farce, or that's what they said, that's the excuse they made. What a what a dreadful decision. It wouldn't wouldn't allow people to visit the graves of their loved ones. Our assembly dictated this. Absolutely shocking. Anyway, have to get out before the gates close. Back home again, and this is the excellent map outlining uh, the layout of the cemetery. I was given this map actually uh, f uh, f by a lady out of the uh, cemetery office just at the entrance gate, and very kind it was of her to come out into the cold whenever she saw me. So uh, you can see that the, the, there's a map key up here. Entrance toilets, grave sections, so the cemeteries divided up into different sections or you'd never find your way or you would never find a grave. Cemetery office, city of Belfast crematorium, reflections coffee shop, garden of remembrance, the wrath, Richard Hutchinson memorial roundabout. I'm just wondering to myself who Richard Hutchinson was. And then we've got the mound and I videoed the mound. And the wrath. <clears throat> and there's the, the details. So we've got coming in here, and the cemetery office is there, number one, and number six is the Richard Hutchison Memorial Roundabout. So normally you'd proceed off to the left. And you can see there were different uh, alphabetical letters, sections, and you, you go on round here. That's the way I went this afternoon. And you come on round here past the lake. And then you're hitting P, section P and W and Y. And there's another lake and the Creevy River, which I didn't even know existed. And there's all the future burial ground I pointed out. And then you're back to the car park and you're back to just below the crematorium and the memorial garden. And as you can see, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of the, uh, the cemetery is actually uh, wooded. And it's, it's very much landscaped. It's really, really well laid out. And actually it's a, it's a credit to uh, Belfast City Council, I have to say. Really well done. Very interesting place. And just above it here, I have got the latest epistle from my good friend Peter McCain, and he signed uh, this for me, and it's uh, the definitive book on Belfast Rose Lawn City Cemetery. And I found it fascinating. I was I've read, and it divides the uh, the cemetery up into different trails. Quirky headstones, headstones with uh, foreign folks on them, children's grave headstones, famous females, marvellous men, sportsmen, military, RUC, troubles victims, bombings, accidents, Celtic cousins, not from this parish, Chinese community and uh, clergy. Well worth the ten pounds I give Peter for it. Very, very informative volume. And you can get that um, down at East Side Centre on the Newton Arts Road or get in touch with Peter personally. Uh, sponsored by James Brown and uh, 
iOS BN supplied by History Hub Ulster and uh, so well worth the read. This is the third volume Peter has uh, released on Belfast cemeteries. He had a he has a book out on Belfast City Cemetery, and he has another book out of trails um, of uh, Dundon Cemetery. And those are the three books he has out about cemeteries. And you will find your way around the cemeteries those three cemeteries using uh, the various books and I think he has another book out about big houses in uh, East Belfast or maybe it's Belfast I think it's East Belfast and you know they just bring the, this history alive so uh, get hold of one of those books call into East Side Centre uh, on the Newton Arts Road uh, beside C.S. Lewis Square and uh, you'll not be disappointed if you're a history buff like me. Okie doke.